With me are two of my fabulous book guardians, Superman and Tasha. And last week, we talked all about Ezra and his character development through In the Beginning, which is the first book in the series. I do, when I write these books, I do go off of the assumption that you've already read the first book. So we just, we don't do background in, in succeeding books. No. If you haven't watched in the beginning videos uh, from last week, go back and watch those. That way you know why we're starting the way we are and all that stuff. You've got the good background on Ezra. So we are just hey. gonna go. We are just gonna go on in and start uh, talking about Ezra's character development in False Idols, which is the second book of the series. Things start to change a little bit in this book. So let's see what's going on. The first time we see Ezra is in chapter six. It's been almost a full year since the events of the first book. And Ezra's appearance in this one is much different from the last book. And what I mean is not only is his physical appearance a little different, but he also appears less in this like fewer times in this book. So he's sort of cementing himself as the has been leading man, which I think we all kind of appreciate. <laughs> it's kind has of been. the reason that I did that is because it's my way as the author of showing you the reader that this guy, he's still around, but he's not our primary focus anymore because he's not Skylar's primary focus anymore. And we focus on what she does and like likes and wants and all that. Yeah, we live third person. Pretty through. much. For the most part. Yeah. Through her. Um, so when we do see Ezra in chapter six, it's at his condo with Peyton Wesley and CJ. It's Ugh. become a little weird tradition for a little while anyway that these four get together after church for lunch. That way, Ezra can hear about how Skylar's doing. That's kind of his way of getting the info. Yeah, the, the faces are, yeah. She smacked me with the eye roll. I felt it. <laughs> <laughs> so this might seem like a band of misfits getting together, but if you think about it, all four of these people have been rejected from Skylar's world since the last book. So it makes a little bit of sense that they would find some weird solace in each other. And I want you to keep that in mind for these next couple books as we see their interactions. So the funny thing about these four people is that all of them seem to, or three of them rather, seem to need or want Ezra in some way for some personal reason, but Ezra only pretends to need them to get what he wants out of it. In truth, he does need CJ. We will go ahead and say that outright because she is the most steady source of food and entertainment that he's had since di Sky ditched him. So let's talk about Ezra and CJ for a sec. I kind of want to know what you guys think of them as a, I wouldn't call them a couple, more like a pseudo couple. What do you guys think of them together? Yeah. At least CJ finally got what she wanted, I guess. Yeah, which is so weird. Yeah. What makes it so, super, what makes it weird? Like, just, like she sees like what he does to Skylar. I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that. Wow, you what? really wanted that? Yeah. Like... Because I was like, yeah, I know he beat his last two ex-wives, but he won't do that to me. Yeah. He won't manipulate me. And I... Like how he manipulated her. I she was think. just... She was weak. She she was a bitch. Yeah. I feel like I could I could fix him. I could change him. Yeah, and that's what I mean. And that's kind of what TJ thinks in her head. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. TJ thinks, like... Oh yeah, I know he like put 
Skylar through a bunch of shit. Yeah. He won't do that to me because yeah. he really does love me. He didn't love yeah. her. I'm different. Yeah. I'm, I'm special. I give yeah. him what he needs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm different. Yeah. I, I'm yeah, doing what all the other girls won't do. Yeah. Anal? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. It's, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. It's. He would oh. find, if CJ wasn't there, yeah, he would find somebody else. Like, yeah, undoubtedly, he's just keeping her around because. Well, she's, she's convenient. convenient. She, yeah, she's well, very I mean, convenient. She's open like Seven Eleven. I mean, yeah, pretty much. She's DTF any time with him, mm-hmm. so it's fine. Mm-hmm. And we will see that in uh, this book or the next what? book. I'm just, I'm just got Jersey Shore just <laughs> in my head now, and it's like, no. Well, and, you know, this goes back to, in one of our very first videos, Yeah. whenever we were talking about the a woman's fascination with the bad boy. Yeah. I think that CJ, of course, we'll get more in detail when we get to her videos, but I think she kind of epitomizes the woman who... Is always I can change him. Yeah. I'm different. I'm gonna know? marry the serial killer. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, <laughs> women are like like I have fascination with serial killers, yeah. but not to that extent. Yeah, like, I'm not gonna marry him. Now. Yeah, no, or write them. No, I was gonna say I wouldn't even want to be a pen pal. I don't think, yeah. but it just you know she's very like I think yeah. I, I think her to kind of her be. work in what way because where she studies. You know, creatures mm-hmm. and uh, of all different kinds, it's a fascination. Ah. And she can actually, in a way, get hands on experimentation. So, to blend both of your thoughts together, could it be that she thinks that only she can change him because of that in depth, hands on kind of? I'm studying about sanguine. No, I stigmatized. Okay, okay. No, I don't think it has anything to I do like with that. her work. We're officially trademarking that word, stigmatized. Yeah, it's where you'll put up with some whatever because the dick is good. Yeah, um, which yeah. we would argue against yeah. that with Ezra based on what Skylar has told us. But yeah, yeah but Skylar could be a different creature altogether. Yeah, true. Yes. But- Still. Some women are easier to please than yes. <laughs> In more ways than well, women. But yeah. This like is that, yeah. She's... We're just I, evolving. I know. Just... <laughs> See what Ezra does. <laughs> but no, yeah. I don't think it has okay. anything to do with work. Okay. She really doesn't mention her work with him or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. She's like in the honeymoon stage with him. And like I do agree. And like yeah. no, I do agree with that. Yeah. By him. Cause she because she is she is very like Yeah, he yeah. can do no wrong. It's been a year and she's still looking at him like, I can't believe yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. Like So now here's where things do start to change a little bit for Azra because he does something that he never has done before that we're led to believe. He Ezra makes it a point to caution CJ on how to deal with her father. So for reference, really quickly, CJ's dad, Jared, is a zombie. He's the only known zombie in all of Murr County, and the only reason he's still living, like we said last week, is because of Noel. Mm-hmm. So that is a it's a it's a thing that scares the county but not enough to do anything about it right now because they figure Noel vouched for him so yeah how bad could he be the, <laughs> the point is that Ezra expresses some concern for Jared's just mere existence and Chloe Joe's safety around him telling CJ remember go for the heart if he turns is that genuine concern or does he just know how to say just the right thing he knows how to say just the right thing you think so oh, he's yeah. not actually he may have some concern because i mean it's a steady food source yeah so you don't want you don't want your food source your contaminated yeah no get it contaminated that's true well but then she would 
die because yeah. you know zombies. Yeah. You know, if if Jared spreads his disease, they will kill him. I think it, it is safe to say yeah. that because yeah. so if he were to pass it to CJ, it would be very sad. But they would both have to go because yeah. at yeah. that point it's too too many. Yeah. So okay. And that, and you don't want, like she said, you don't want the cash cow to go. Yeah. So he's he's showing some concern. Okay. For his own well being. Yeah. But it's still some concern, and he hasn't shown that before. Like around Skyler, he was very cocky, even when he should have been concerned. Yeah. He was still very like, I got this. So, oh, so we're starting. Don't worry, little yeah. lady. I've got this all taken care of. So we're starting to kind of wonder here, right off the bat, if Sky maybe got through to him a little bit. We'll find out. I don't think so. I think it's more of a may again steady food source, self sustaining. You know, they have to go track something down. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, she's on call, and he knows it. Um, so that chapter ends with Peyton getting deathly ill and fleeing. Remember that for a future chapter, because it does come back. Um, Azra's words to Peyton um, on her way out was that she probably needs to go see Sky. Maybe he was hoping Peyton would let him tag along on that journey. I don't know. I don't know why he would care to mention it. But we move on to chapter 11. Blessed Implosion, fifth in the Angel of Death series, now available at steviejoeauthor.com. Then, Azra makes his way out to Falshuk Mountain and stops by the McCoy farm to see Julia because he was invited over for dinner. Of course, Sonny is still, even though he was invited, Sonny is still none too pleased to see him. You know, they've got that history. Um, the men, they bicker like they always do, and it really frustrates Julia. She's, I mean, if anybody's a victim right now, it's her. She is just this poor woman. So, um, Ezra even says to her, Jules, you deserve better, and Sonny doesn't care about you, and, you know, starts tearing him down and all that. Then Julia just, she's had enough, and she says, you know what, Ezra, I have volunteered for experimentation with the conquistadors. Julia is hopeful that the conquistadors are going to cure her so that she can walk again. That's a big deal for her. Yeah. She's been she she used to be able to walk, but then a few years ago she got paralyzed and couldn't. So now she and that kind of started deteriorating her marriage. It's a whole thing. Anyway, Ezra is instantly wary of this idea of her going to the conquistadors again. Something we've not really seen from him before. And he begs her not to go. But the decision has been made. And Julia even tells Ezra, you know, you ought to do it too. So we can be normal again and free from these magical burdens. Ezra insists that it's not for him though and leaves. So why do you think Ezra is so adamant about remaining a sanguis? Is there a secret reason that we haven't touched on yet? Or is it just that he's so obsessed with Skylar that he doesn't want to lose what seems like his only link to her? Uh, or is it something else? No, it's because he's the original son. Okay. And I think they would figure that out by his blood. And, like, maybe he couldn't be changed yeah, he by their... couldn't be. he couldn't be brought back to human form. He, he'd sit there and probably age rapidly and probably die immediately. Which... I don't think would hurt anybody's feelings, no. but okay. But I think that's a very good time, thought. That being said, though, the, the reason for his concern is Julia is one of his friends. Yes, and one of the very, very few. And it's one of the few times where you don't see the narcissism. Mm -hmm. He actually talks to her on the same level. Yeah, and genuinely shows that he does care, which is really weird mm -hmm. for a character like that, especially mm -hmm. after everything he's done. But that's the only one that he does that to. Everybody else, they, they don't care. But for some reason, Julia, because of the fact that 
she befriended him at basically his lowest. Yeah. Because, you know, he was just kind of drifting around aimlessly. Mm-hmm. That he genuinely cares for her. Okay. Sonny, yeah, I I totally agree with him on that, that Sonny's a POS. Yes. Which, you know... He has oh, not but been my trained farm, otherwise. But my farm, but my yeah. farm. Well, you know what? Hell with your farm. You got a wife that uh, wants your attention. Yeah, and, and needs your like needs you because she's paralyzed. So if A is right now, here's a question: going talking about you're saying he does seem to genuinely care about Julia. If that's true, why wouldn't he just stop her from doing something that he won't even do for himself? Because it's still her decision. And as much as that he doesn't want her to, it's still her decision. So not only does he care about her, but he respects her. Yeah. Because you don't do that. Well, he knows who somebody. she really is, too. And that's the other part of it. Okay. Is that you really don't want to cross certain people. And, and maybe she's one of those people. Yeah. Okay. Because she seems all nice and, and loving and stuff, but we all know that there's everybody has a dark side mm -hmm. of some sort. Mm hmm And Skyler he knows... Brings that up later. And, yeah, and, you know, Azra knows who she really is. Okay. Before everything. So, he's like... You know what? You want to do that? That that's your thing. You I'm sorry. You. I'm I'm sorry. I don't want you to do it. I think it's a bad idea. I don't trust those humans any further. I can throw them. Mm -hmm. But hey, okay. You know. Well, after that, in chapter fifteen of False Idols, Ezra heads to the Devil's Fountain to get some blood and socialize and all that. It is a very important note here before we really get into chapter 15 that the blood that he drinks from the bar in creature comforts is sweeter than anything he's ever tasted why what's so special about that and maybe infused with magic who knows mm -hmm. i mean they don't either you really don't really explain why nope. it's better nope just but it could that be it, is. it could be you know Maybe from a uh, mythic. Who knows? You know. Okay. All right. Well. <laughs> the blood sacrifices of, of 18 year old virgins. Oh my gosh. So, Ezra in Creature Comforts in Chapter 15, he encounters Peyton. That's why I said to remember mm -hmm. that she gets sick and flees. He encounters Peyton at the pool talking with a mermaid. She appears to be much better than what she was when she was at his place. So he assumes she got cured or whatever it was she needed. And she is now sitting naked at this pool. And he's really startled by it. Uh, so much so that when they have like an interaction together, he's a bit speechless. And she flirts with him and asks him to come to a private room with her. He does... And she lets him feed from her for quite some time that night. So my question is, do you think that that was merely a sexual experience for Ezra? I mean, why would he go with Peyton? Like, is he hoping she'll lead him to Sky or something? Or was this just a thing? If I can't have one Jericho, I'll have another. I mean, it, could that be? Like, no, in a way, I think it was. Okay. Is that, well, yeah. I can't have her... So I'll do but my sister. Did, yeah. Next best thing. Yeah. Okay. And it might have been a release for him and the same thing for Peyton. Yeah. Which we do kind of see it as a release for Peyton because she even confesses that she really does like the taste of fresh blood. But she would never say that out loud to anybody. I don't even know why she fucking said it to Ezra, but you know. Yeah. So, hey, what girls what? have a weird obsession with Ezra. Like... It's that whole tall, tall, dark, and dangerous. Yeah. You know, they, oh, I want to tell you my deepest fears. Yeah. Why? Yeah. <laughs> well, that does it for this episode. So thank you guys for contributing again. Thank all of you for watching. Once again, 
we will be back in a few days with the next episode of Ezra as his character develops through false idols second in the series so be sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything and we love you and we'll see you in a couple days catch up on the angel of death series today the first four entries are now available directly at stevie joe